One of the internet's favorite things to do is to look at wrestlers in WWE and then find their partners who happen to be in other wrestling companies and go, oh my gosh, everything's going to explode because I can't believe you can have two separate individuals doing their job under two different banners. I mean, it really makes me chuckle. But yeah, I get it. It's kind of fascinating because there is some kind of war going on, but that doesn't mean we can't just share the love. And also in this case, look at the love and go, ah, aren't they just a... Lovely, lovely couple. My name is Simon Miller. Thank you very much for joining me here on What Culture Wrestling. And this is indeed 10 WW wrestlers who are dating the competition. Number 10, Lana in WWE and Miro in AEW. A brand new one that's only been real since September 2020. Seeing the former Rusev, now known as Miro, walking onto the set of All Elite Wrestling means he is now, of course, AEW, whereas his wife, Lana, is basically a WWE veteran. I mean, she's been there for ages. It always leads to some speculation that maybe the ravishing Russian, who's American, may also jump ship. But somewhat oddly, this was summed up best by AJ Styles and AJ Styles' son. Because when he was doing his weekly live stream and he was talking about Miro making his debut, his kid was like, wait a minute, what? How's that going to work? Because those two are married. And AJ Styles looked at the camera and went, it's a job, we're employees, I'm happy for him, there ain't really that much to talk about. And I was like, yeah, he's kind of right. It doesn't mean it's not fun to imagine, but given how joined at the hip they were under the watchful eye on Vince McMahon, I actually think this will give both a new lease of life. Hopefully they can flap their wings and succeed by themselves. I don't know what I'm doing. Number nine, Tony Storm in NXT and Juice Robinson in New Japan. Tony Storm could probably be brought up to the main roster tomorrow and absolutely smash it. I mean, she won the Mae Young Classic in 2018 and she's already been the NXT UK champion. And do you know how old she is? She is only 24. Hands up if you feel like an old man. I'm gonna put it down because I don't wanna feel that way. So she has been pretty successful, which may be why she has also sought out someone else who is also winning all of their dreams. And I'm talking about Juice Robinson, who of course is a major player in New Japan. I mean, he's been the United States IWGP champion. And if you ask me, Simon, do you think one day maybe he'll be contending for the big one, the IWGP World Championship? I would say, Yes. Robinson also worked for WWE between 2011 and 2015 as CJ Parker. So maybe one day they also end up under the same promotion. And if not, I don't think it matters. And if you want to see how much they like each other, just check out their social media. Although the way I said that makes it sound really weird. Number eight, John Morrison in WWE and Tyre Valkyrie in Impact. An item since 2016. These two actually have worked together because at one point they both were in Impact and they're also both in Lucha Underground. Just for some weird trivia too, John Morrison actually left the WWE in 2011, which was also the same year when Tyre Valkyrie signed a developmental deal. So at first it looked like these two distant lovers' paths were never going to cross. And obviously they did in around about 2016. They then tied the night in 2018 with some famous faces in the audience because there was The Miz, there was Dolph Ziggler, and there was Zack Ryder. And Johnny Boy has even said in interviews, hey, look, if we're able to do this again in WWE, given that we have worked together before, I think that would be a lovely way to live my life. And he's right, right? Who wouldn't want that? Also, given everything that's happened in 2020, I won't hear it anymore. Anything and everything is quite literally possible. Number seven, Mickey James in WWE and Nick Aldis in the NWA. Mickey James is without a doubt a future WWE Hall of Famer. I mean, she's back on Raw right now and she was having an incredible feud with Trish Stratus decades ago. Nick Aldis, her husband, is also doing the same in the NWA and really that whole promotion is built around him. So this is the definition of a power couple. The two met when they were both performing for Impact in 2015 and then they got married and had a son. And what a smooth talker Mr. Aldis is. When he was being interviewed about how this relationship began, he said, well, as soon as I saw her, I knew she was the one for me. What a little sucker he is. Recently, there was also a little bit of friction between Nick and the WWE, where he responded to Bruce Pritchard, who of course is the executive director of Raw and SmackDown's claims that he didn't have the it factor by basically saying they didn't really like Bruce Pritchard and that he can kiss his ass. I'm paraphrasing, but that was basically the point. It's also just wrestling nowadays, isn't it? You can't get through three minutes without somebody having beef. And while I'm recording this video, I bet I go back onto my computer, onto the internet, and two random people have just fallen out. I'm 
sometimes you just want people to get along. Number six, Bailey in WWE and Aaron Solo in AEW. Bailey is just a damn WWE hero. Not only is she the first ever women's Grand Slam champion, but she can play good guy, she can play bad guy. She's probably in the hottest feud right now between her and Sasha. She gets a round of applause. As for her other half, well, he's not only making a name for himself in AEW, where he often pops up on Dark, but before the indie scene did close down, he was absolutely killing it. And for some extra trivia, I've already given you some bits, I'll give you some more. In 2015, he auditioned for WWE Tough Enough. Obviously, he didn't get in. It was in 2016 where him and Bailey did get engaged, and given that they met in 2010, this is a 10 year long relationship and that is relationship goals. There has been some fallout here and there when in 2018, Aaron went on his Twitter account and said, look, can everybody stop calling me Mr. Bailey? Which is fair, he's his own man and he's making his own way through the crazy world of sports entertainment, but they do just seem so happy. Once again, when you go on social media, the love is in the air. Number five, Chelsea Green in NXT and Matt Cordona in AEW. This relationship has an extra twist because at one point, not that long ago, they were both under the WWE banner then we'll assume they were both just having a great time. It also gets more crazy because, of course, when Cordona was Zack Ryder, he was WWE. And for a little while, Chelsea Green was Impact, but now she's in WWE and NXT, and who's moved on to AEW? It's just so many moving parts. Do you know how they met too? Well, they were introduced thanks to good friends, Cody and Brandy Rose. And originally, Zack Ryder, Matt Cordona wanted none of this because he was like, look, I've dated wrestlers before. I'm not interested, but when he found out, that she was a big fan of Disney, he slid into her DMs. That is his words, not mine. Green has also said that her bow has been massively supportive of her wrestling career, and that just makes me feel good in the tum-tum. That's what you want, people lifting you up and not tearing you down. Number four, Peyton Royce in WWE and Sean Spears in AEW. These two actually met when they were both in NXT, because obviously Peyton Royce signed on there in 2015, and by that point, Sean Spears was Ty Dillinger, and he was like furniture in NXT, he had done it all. Apparently this all happened very quickly according to the former Iconic, because not only were they drawn to each other, for one reason or another, it was Sean Spears, Ty Dillinger, who really helped her along as she was training. They married in the summer of 2019, and honestly, these two, once again, if you go on Twitter or Instagram, the love they have, well, it makes me a little bit jealous. I would like to find someone like that. Now, if my own girlfriend is watching, I was joking. I didn't mean it. We have it. I love you. Obviously, Spears left WWE in 2019 to go over to AEW and has made it very clear it makes no difference. It hasn't changed their relationship at all. And again, like we've already talked about, it's just a job. You know what? He ain't wrong. I'm just going to chat out 10 because that's what he used to do. Also, I still want to be your tag team partner. Number three, Cedric Alexander in WWE and Big Swole in AEW. Man, I would like to ask Big Swole what she thinks of her partner's recent actions. Because obviously, he turned heel, he went bad guy, and beat up his so-called friends Apollo Crews and Ricochet. And actually, there was a time when Big Swole was on Twitter telling WWE to turn Cedric Alexander heel. So she probably loves it. These two also have a daughter, and apparently this relationship moved really quickly, according to Big Swole, because within seven, eight, or nine months, they had moved in together, and everything just felt right. If also you're a long-time watcher of AEW, you know this has already come up on TV when Big Swole was feuding with Britt Baker, when the dentist went, look, in your house, there's only one wrestler that people care about, and it's not you. Shots fired. Swole has also said that when she did make the decision to become a pro wrestler, it was Cedric Alexander that sat her down and not only gave her the motivation that she needed, but also all the words of advice and encouragement. So there it is again, people. Just go out there and be good. Number two, Rhea Ripley in NXT and Dimitri Jackson in AEW. While many feel like WWE didn't strike when the iron was hot in terms of Rhea Ripley, because you know we had all that stuff with Charlotte Flair, she is still gonna be a superstar. She's just too good and that's probably gonna be the same from her partner, Dimitri Action Jackson. So honestly, he's like a really good wrestler and once again, you can see him on AEW Dark and when the indie scene gets going again, you can probably see him on there flying around. He's got the skills of a champion. Also, given how many selfies these two share of themselves working out, you will not be surprised to hear they met in the gym. That's quite brave, to be honest, because, you know, you can go up to a girl in there and say, hey, how's it going? They're like, go away, I'm lifting weights, and they're correct. If you want a deeper insight into their life, they do have a YouTube channel where they do the likes of Q&As, 
And also, Rhea Rapley is always wearing some of his merchandise from pro wrestling tees, or so it seems. I'm also going to guess that this is one of those relationships that will be separated by a company divide for some time, because obviously Rhea Ripley ain't leaving WWE soon, and Jackson seems to have quite a good thing going on in All Elite Wrestling. Number one, Britt Baker in AEW, and Adam Cole in NXT. These two are just great. Despite their on-screen personas suggesting otherwise, they just seem like the nicest people backed up recently by none other than La Champion Chris Jericho, because he said he didn't really know Adam Cole until he started going to All Elite Wrestling shows to see Britt Baker, and they had a conversation, and he said, what a wonderful human being, and maybe in the future, those two can tangle at some point. Now, don't get too carried away with this, because despite rumors to the contrary, Adam Cole still has one long ass NXT contract. But that's good. It means he's going to have a job for a while. The fascinating twist is that even though that they are both wrestlers, they actually met through the dating app known as Bumble, which, if you care, is also how I met my girlfriend. I mean, you don't care. But that's just information now you have in your head. She didn't even recognize him at first because he's not in pro wrestler mode on there. And his name was Austin. And it was only after a little while she clicked and was like, oh, that's Adam Cole. And then because of that, before they went on their first date, Britt Baker was like, wait a minute, do I want to go on a date with this guy? Because he doesn't come across very nice on TV. And they say kayfabe is dead. On the other end of all of this, Cole has mentioned how proud he is as Britt Baker for everything that she has done in the wrestling industry so far. So in 2020, he must have boiled over with this because I think she had the best character transformation of the whole 12 month period. I mean it. There was also that time when Baker was seen in the audience at an NXT TakeOver event, even though this should have been taken for what it was, just one partner going to see their other partner work. But you know how this stuff has to happen. Any little thing like this, and <laughs> massive explosion. Know of any other wrestlers in WWE that are dating the competition, and hint, hint, wink, wink, Ruby Riot may be one, so talk about that down there. Also, like the video, share the video, subscribe to What Culture Wrestling, then head over to whatculture.com where you can read articles like this with your eyes, or if you're Rey Mysterio, one eye. Follow What Culture on Twitter at What Culture WWE, and watch more videos here on What Culture Wrestling. I'm only joking, Rey Mysterio, I think you rock. My name is Simon from What Culture, thank you for tuning in as always, and I will see you when I see you.